Hi guys, Tom Morrison here, and today we're going to show you an easy way to improve your overall hip mobility. First off, you want to have a good flexibility test that you can keep coming back to so you can see if you're making improvements. So I highly recommend the deep lunge test and taking a note of how far you can get your elbow down so that you can actually see visible improvement. I'll put the link in the description here. We're going to take you through the clockwork hip mobility drill. So what Jenny's gonna do is put one foot up on a box or if you are using, if you're at home, you could use your stairs or even a dining room chair. And what she's going to do is have the leg that's on the ground, the toe is going to be pointed to 12 o'clock. Then she's going to bring the knee forward as much as she can, keeping the heel down and try and get her butt down as close to her foot as she can. And then just rocks herself back a little bit. Then with the bottom bottom leg she's going to then point the toe to one o'clock and then bring herself back forward. So this is going to change how much the pelvis is opened from there. She's going to come back up, she's going to go to two o'clock, bring herself forward and then back. So you can see where this is going, she's then going to go to three o'clock. So this changes the position of the hip. So your hips can do this at all these different angles. So this is a great way to open this up. So she's going to four o'clock now and you'll really find yourself how far you can get to. So Jenny has quite good hip flexibility so she's able to get a lot further than most people will. But this is where you can sort of gauge where you feel tight yourself. So it's a really good thing for body awareness as well. Then when she swaps to the other side, so then she's gonna be this way. So again, you point the toe to 12 o'clock, you bring yourself as forward as you can, and sort of take note if you notice that one knee is able to travel a lot further than the other one as well in any different positions, and try and notice if there's any difference in how your hips feel as well. And you just go here. So when you're at this side, you're going from 12 o'clock to 11 o'clock to 10 o'clock. And then where are we at tonight? That's about quarter past three. <laughs> so you just bring yourself down. So this is the bent leg variation. And then you go back again to the first First leg after that and now you go with a straight leg so now you're able to stretch out the hamstring as well and what Jenny's going to do is just lean the torso forward so there's two different ways you can actually play around with this you can either let the back round and see how low down you can get or you can try and keep the back straight and then see how low down you can get and you notice it won't be as far and you're probably feeling more intense stretch in the hamstring and again the bottom foot still applies it stays exactly the same you point it at those different directions and you just bring yourself down to wherever you can get Get to and if you're feeling it too much in the calf what you could do would be to point the toe and that'll take the calf out of it so you'll be able to get more into the hamstring or if you did want to stretch the calf then you just pull the toes up towards your face and you go down that way and that's how you can mess around so then we we'll go to the other side again and just work through those same positions. So just remember to change that bottom foot to get all of those different hip angles. You're gonna hit a lot of good stuff whenever you're working your way through this. That's it. Another thing to watch out as well is the knee. Make sure you're not fully straightening the knee whenever you're stretching. So if you're feeling the stretch in the back of the knee, we don't want that. If you bend the knee ever so slightly, you should feel it more up in the middle and actually feel it in the hamstring. So you're gonna spend a full five minutes on each side and there's no right or wrong with it. Play around with the drill and see where you feel tight and then go back to whatever you tested. So if you tested the deep lunge test, retest that and see if you have made an improvement in that drill and then you know it's a good drill for you so it's really really good for biomechanical feedback which is to see if there's an improvement that means your body likes it so keep on doing it. This is such a good drill for beginners because there's not a lot of load that is actually going through the knees and the hips especially. So you are very much in control of how much pressure you can put through. So it's really good to get the muscles moving, but it's also really good to get blood flowing as well. So even if you're coming back from something like a back injury or a knee injury, these are really good drills to work on because they're really, really safe because like I said, there's just not that much body weight going through. Um, so it will build you up to more advanced things like lunges, like squats as well so take your time with it if you're just coming back from an injury but it's a great thing to work on sometimes mobility drills can feel like a lot of effort and it really puts you off doing them but what I love about the clockwork drill is that it doesn't require any equipment and it's dead easy to do even when you are feeling that little bit stiff and the best thing about it is you don't already have to be flexible anybody can do this at any level